My name is Nikita. I am the director of content and coordination for DEF CON. I am the chief hacker wrangler. Um, so I handle a lot of the logistical operations for DEF CON, as well as um, sort of wrangle a lot of the department leads like that you see here. I wanted to start out with um, in a little quick introduction and then give you a brief overview. Um, we have um, a null value, Drew. Yeah. Did I just dox him? I just. You said his name. I'm so oh, sorry. Man. <laughs> then we That's have. That's how we start this off. This is going great. That too. Then we have Grifter. <laughs> Grifter Hi. is the lead for our contests and uh, events for DEF CON. And then we have Ada, who runs our wonderful hotline program. And um, I have some notes here, and I will be perfectly honest with you, I am a nervous speaker, so I'm clutching the podium. You're doing um, great. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, you're, it's fantastic. Is she doing great? Absolutely. <laughs> I thought the cheering would make you more nervous. Did it work? A little bit. All right, <laughs> all right, thank you. Back me up when we do that again. Okay, so um, some things I wanted to let you know is that um, if you are looking for something to do, um, you can come to the facility between 8 a.m. and 2 a.m. So we are open that whole entire time. So if you are bored in your hotel room and you don't know anybody, you can come down. There's some social events tonight. There's parties. There's people that are just sitting around hacking on stuff. Um, I'm plenty of people to talk to, plenty of things to do. Lots of stuff happens at night that is just unplanned. And um, it's always fun to see what people come up with every year. But um, we have things like laser, Tetris, we have um, multiple parties. So if you are here just because these halls close at 6 p.m doesn't mean the rest of DEF CON does. So from 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. and then in our hall, in the halls that you're in now are open from 10 to 6, so villages, contests, those are, those all close around at 6. Um, oh, oh, we have one really, really important rule and usually we refer to it as the 3 two, one rule and that means three hours of sleep, two meals, one shower. Now, we're kind of all getting on in our age, and um, this is my 21st DEF CON. Speak for yourself. I'm a spring <laughs> chicken. And I can't do three hours of sleep anymore. So I have made an executive decision to therefore mandate that it is now six hours of sleep. So six hours of sleep, two meals, and one shower every day. Please. I advocate Please. for uh, six hours of sleep, three <laughs> meals, two showers. Last night I got three hours and three minutes of sleep. I am killing it. <laughs> it's important to take care of yourself. Las Vegas is really big. It's hot outside. There's lots of traveling. Um, it's really easy to get dehydrated. It's one of the number one things that happens to people when they're not feeling well at DEF CON. It's because you are dehydrated and speaking from personal Personal experience here, you need to drink water or you might die. So, drink water. Um, another thing, another rule is listen to the goons. I'm sure you guys have noticed the goons in the hallways directing you to the left, to the right. Whoever just made that announcement, I heard. Um, listen to them and if they're yelling, it's only to get your attention. Um, never really to be unkind intentionally. Um, if you do have any problems with goons, you can either email feedback at defcon.org or you can call the hotline and um, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, Defcon is about trying th new things. Um, we're all noobs here. Even me, I may be 21 years, but I still consider myself a noob at lots of stuff, and that's cool, that's okay. Um, it's a choose your own adventure here. You don't have to, 
think, oh, I have to have this checklist. I have to go to talks. I have to go to this village. I have to go to that village. I have to go to that village. You, if you find something that you are interested in, one, the talks will be online later. So you can catch them later and you can catch up later, but also find your people, find the thing that gets you really jazzed up and you'll know it when you find it. You'll know when you don't really want to leave an area. Don't. It's okay. It'll, all that other stuff will be here next year. Um, have fun, uh, try new things. And there's a lot of things. One of the things about our villages and, and to a degree, a lot of our contests is I try to ensure that no matter where you are at DAFCON, you can have zero knowledge about a subject. It doesn't matter what village it is. They have a, something that you can walk in and you can learn. You can go in, do a thing, have a workshop, do a, an activity, build a badge, um, work a solution out for something. Right off the street, anybody's grandmother can come in and learn something new and then walk, walk out the better or more curious or for it. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to say, I don't, I don't know how to do this, show me. Or, um, hey, I'm really interested in this, but I don't want to do it alone. It's okay to collaborate and it's okay to compete too. We have things like scavenger hunt, which are absolutely amazing for going out and meeting people and trying new things, getting these new experiences, things that you're not going to get at other conferences because we are so very unique as a culture, as a community, as a conference, that we have so many things that you can do to collaborate or <laughs> compete. Can, can I make a comment on that too? Um, so you're saying like, yeah, go out and, and try new things, do things. I, I think something that I hear really often is people will say, oh, well, I don't know anything about that. Like, so it's like, oh, you should go check out the aerospace village. And they're like, but I don't know anything about that. And it's like, there's this misconception that you're going there to um, use your vast amount of knowledge of the aerospace industry to it. That's, that's not what that's about. The people who are in there and creating the villages are really excited about sharing what they know with you. So you can walk in with absolutely no knowledge. I hear people say things like, oh, I don't really go to DEF CON because I'm not very technical. And it's like, it's not necessarily about just being technical. It's about going learning, growing, and, and again, trying new things. You may be the best car hacker that exists and you don't know because you've never given it a shot. So go in and just approach somebody and say, I've never done anything with this before. Um, can somebody show me? And if they don't immediately show you, they'll point you to the person who will. So just don't be shy. I know it's difficult for us. It's very prevalent that we're uh, introverted in this, um, in this community, in this industry, and all those things. Just just try, just go up and be like, I don't know how to do this. Will somebody show me? And you can have some of the best experiences. I know that's been huge personally for me and for my own growth um, as a person and as a hacker, just walking up and being like, what are you doing? What does that mean? And then watching the other person get excited about sharing that with you. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my opinion, the, uh, the only precursor or prerequisite for attending DEF CON successfully is a willingness to learn. If you're not willing to learn, why are you here? Uh, everyone's willing to help. The $25 chicken tenders. Yes. Yeah, that's why they're yes. here. Yeah. Or, or the $30 burgers. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. And I, and I would say that I've noticed some people, their first DEF CON say, you can see when they've been, they've been shut down before mm -hmm. and they say, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm going on a rant. <laughs> Don't be sorry. That's what we're all here for. Go on the damn rant. Say the right. thing. Tell us what you're excited about. Talk about it. Because that, we're all like that. We're all here for a reason. And um, I, I feel like I've heard it bunches and bunches of times. People, they come and they're like, I found my people. Yeah. And that's why we've got people who have been gooning for so long is because we found our people. We want to make sure everybody else does too. So, okay. um, Grifter. Yes. What type Akita. of contests do we have this year? Um, I'm so glad you asked me that question, Akita. 
as the head of the contest and events here at DEF CON, um, honestly, we've got everything. If you, uh, for me, I, like our motto for the contest and events is not one talk, not even one. All right, like, and, the, and Nikita mentioned that a little bit. I'm sorry, I say to the head of content. Um, but um, but our, our thing is that you can watch the talks later on YouTube, but you won't have the people that are here sitting around you um, at home. Uh, they may be watching you, but they're just not there in the room. Uh, yeah, that's good for your anxiety. Um, anyway, so uh, I always say, like, go and try the things that are here that you can't have when you're, when you're gone. Now, that doesn't mean if there's something that you're super passionate about and you know there's a talk that you want to see or your friend is speaking, go support, you know, yell woo out in the crowd. Um, but, but genuinely, like, for me, one of the things that I enjoyed the most about DEF CON in the early years that I was coming was competing in a contest. Like it forced me to get outside of my comfort zone, um, forced me to interact with, with strangers, frankly, right, who all you know, use spooky names, and, and work on things that I didn't know how to do. Like I, a, a contest is what introduced me to lock picking. Like I just, I, there was a part of a contest that I didn't know how to do it, and I was like, oh no, and I couldn't get past a certain thing, and eventually I got help from someone else, and then I was like, okay, that's something I need to learn. So I, I went and bought a bunch of picks, and I spent the next year picking locks so that when I came back the next year to compete in the contest, I knew when I hit that bar, I would be ready to go, right? So it forced me to continue to develop myself. So we have everything from, again, uh, aerospace type of uh, car hacking or just plain weird like the scavenger hunt and I love the scavenger hunt I ran it for years back when we were at the Alexis didn't Park. you create it what's that didn't you create it no Pinguino created it oh, okay yeah I didn't create it uh, Pinguino created it she ran it for a couple of years and then she reached out to me and said I'm not gonna be able to be a DEF CON can you take this over and so um, we just mm, we we remove answer it who is it no answer it answer it on stage answer it on stage do it please 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 do it oh, nikita it would have been weird um oh keep defcon weird so speaking of the scavenger hunt we just put a bunch of really weird stuff on there and so when you see somebody doing something incredibly odd it might be the scavenger hunt or they might just be neuro spicy i don't know um but but go and and compete in things that push you to learn new skills or just push you to keep DEF CON weird. And I know we all try to do that. So I have another question for you. Um, yeah. How many black badges do you have and what are they and how can you get them? Ooh. Yeah, I want to know how many do you have. How many do I have, Nikita? You tell me since you're the one who tells me. I've <laughs> given many? up at this point. <laughs> um, okay, so um, normally... I mean, how many have you won? How many have I won personally? Mm -hmm. Three. Um, so I competed what's in a contest. What's a black badge, Grifter? Oh, what's a black badge, you ask? A black badge is when you, certain contests will be given a black badge for the winner of that contest, and that gets you free entry into DEF CON for life. And that started at DEF CON, I guess, 10 technically, or 9 technically, because somebody got it for the cyber ethical challenge or something. And then the next year, we had actual black badges. So it started um, really at DEF CON 10 and has gone ever since. And no one knows which contest is going to get that up front. And that's on purpose. We want you to compete in the contests that are of interest to you. And then maybe you might win a black badge um, versus just being like, oh, that contest gets a black badge. I'll focus on that, right? Yeah. Um. 18, by the way, that's the number of badges. There are 18 black badges. Eight of them go to CTF. The rest of them go to the rest of the contest. Okay. okay. The black badge is also known as the Uber badge. Uber. Uber. Yeah. So that could be you. That means super in German. One of you out here. Is that it? Does it mean that? Hello, German friends. No? Scheiße. Um, Ada. Uh, <laughs> ow! Ow! Many fans, and thank you. Uh, just the ones in the front row. <laughs> what, um, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. What is Hotline? Uh, so Hotline is a service that's been going for five DEF CONs now, but that's seven years. So 
you know, canceled DEF CONs, unfortunately. Uh, you can call it for a number of things. We have people who are, are there all throughout the con to answer your questions about various information things, but even more so uh, if you have code of conduct issues with anybody, um, we can call and talk to us. Um, if you ha are in a crisis, if you're having a panic attack, if you are um, not feeling comfortable at con, if you need, just need somebody to talk to, um, they're trained to handle all of those things. And that's why the front row is screaming at me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I personally can say that there are a lot of people who are very happy for what Hotline does. And I, I know that you spent several uh, weeks doing training with our goons, with volunteers, to um, talk about how to escalate a call, how to de-escalate a call, how to you know, deal with the things that a hotline um, is, is there for, for our attendees. And I just think that's amazing. So. Hey, they actually start, uh, I start looking for people in February. Uh, we pick people early March. They start class late March. They go once a week, every week until DEF CON. So it's a little extensive, but it's also uh, the same training that I did when I used to work for uh, suicide prevention hotlines. So they can help you with anything. You can just call and talk if you need to. Yeah. Um, and why did hotlines start? Uh, hotlines started uh, in 2018 and the year before. We had an issue where someone came forward with an issue. Um, the coon who took, tried to take the, the incident from her didn't know how to handle it properly. So he was looking for me because I come from a back, background in psychology, suicide prevention hotline, and uh, couldn't find me. And, to, and when he find, finally found me, she had disappeared. Um, and at that point in time, all, all of the people at DEF CON were like, how can we make this not happen again? How can we give some place, somebody who's going through that some place to talk to so that they can come forward and yeah. they can feel comfortable um, from the comfort of their hotel room if they need to? Um, and that's sort of where we came from, just some place with, com with a comforting voice to talk to. Yeah. I'm sure you take a lot of like serious calls, serious things that you, you know, but what is your kind of quirkiest, your weirdest, your funniest, your... Uh, I have to say, we do get calls from people trapped in back of house. Uh, if you find a door and you don't know where it goes to, I highly recommend not going in it. You I, on the other it. hand, say go through the door. <laughs> do it. You may get trapped. We've already had one this year, and we've had a few in the past. Um, strange doors may lead to a bunch of locked rooms that you can't get out of. Go through the door. But Halloween is there for you to make sure that you find your way out. You have a backup. They'll come get you. Go through the door. Facilities might come get you too, and they might not I, like you after that. Nikita, can I go up there? No. Please. No. Can someone take me up no. there? No. Please, but it's up no. there. I just no. want to... Somebody turn off this mic. <laughs> Immediately, no. So, I know he wakes up every morning and chooses violence. He really does. He is. <laughs> I'm gonna get up. There. I mean, he's like a, he's like a little kitten. Oh, you know? I'm I'm getting up there. I'm throwing it down. Selfie. Getting kicked out of facilities. That's. <laughs> Only if you get caught. <laughs> And that's no, my boy. Uh, I don't know who's me, clapping, but that's my boy right there. Uh huh. I bet. Let me ask you a question. Um, tell us a little bit about what Hacker Tracker is. Obviously, an app that tracks hackers. No. <laughs> Can it track them across the rafters? <laughs> <laughs> Only if they're up there and they're not. Uh, <laughs> Hacker Tracker is the uh, conference information app for DEF CON and numerous other conferences. Uh, DEF CON's the biggest by far. Uh, we were started by Whitney maybe a decade ago. Uh, I joined the team in DC 27, I believe it was. Uh, we're the ones that provide the schedule to you. Please install Hacker Tracker on your phone. We don't actually track hackers. 
it doesn't matter how many comments we get on Google or Apple asking us to track hackers. We're not going to do it. <laughs> it's an open source app. You can read our source if you want. It's on GitHub. Uh, yeah. So uh, ha tracking hackers is not a feature, but what is your favorite feature about or your newest features about Hacker Tracker? So the newest features are uh, a more easy way to see contests uh, and events and parties so that you can just look at the, the list of them on screen rather than having to search through the schedule for them. Uh, and this year we added a feedback option for all of the official content. Uh, so please use that feature. Uh, and how does the feedback, how does the feedback work? <laughs> uh, as soon as this talk starts, or short, a few minutes after, I think, uh, you can open the talk. Just search for it if you don't already have it open in Hacker Tracker. A uh, button will appear at the bottom. Just clearly says, submit feedback. We've, Ada and I, have worked closely to select the questions. Uh, our, our big question we want to know is, quote unquote, is it hacker? Uh, courtesy of DT. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. our, uh, give me my microphone back. So, so please <laughs> click uh, a yes on that or we're all going to be fired. So <laughs> just say yes, positive feedback. And, you know, the, the what is hacker thing, I can speak to that a little bit, is that um, it's really important to Jeff that we maintain hacker culture, even though InfoSec has expanded to be so great compared to what it was, you know, back when, when this was started. Um, now all of our hackers are in InfoSec. We still, we're finding things that people want to share things, but we are not an InfoSec conference. We are not about that. And so sometimes what is hacker can be, what is just the curious nature of what you found and how and why? And it's not for a co corporation. It's not for your job. It's not for anybody, but, but you and the information and sharing that knowledge so that it is open and free. Now, obviously we like, you know, like what's behind that door. <laughs> hmm. I, I will say that when we were told that our, our, we were supposed to find out, is it hacker? Uh, we kind of just walked around for a while going, is it hacker? Is it is hacker? hacker? Is it is hacker? hacker? Is this hacker? Hacker. Yeah, but I we're realize, not tracking those. <laughs> I realized that I said courtesy of DT. Uh, since this is a 101 panel, you may not know much about DEF CON. Uh, DT is the dark tangent, or Jeff. Uh, he is Nikita's boss. Uh, sometimes. Nikita's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. You gotta change. <laughs> so this, I don't know if you can see that. It says, definitely not a tracker. Um, and it has a tile in it because the number one question asked to the contest and events goon is where is grifter or have you seen grifter and so this year they lojack me <laughs> so all of them have access to a shared link that will tell them where I am in the facility at any given time or if I've left my hotel so hacker tracker <laughs> <laughs> he has not given me that link and hell no <laughs> Two, next year it will be revised so that he has a boundary zone. So instead, he will have to remain in a certain area or it will go off and he will get a few warnings, almost like how I trained my dog not to leave the yard. Mm, don't if threaten you do, me with a good time. <laughs> don't you do it. He will get a shock. That's my favorite. You know what? I might just create that. Next year we will have a button to shock Grifter. Can you shock him if he And the more people who who vote to, to shock you, you'll get a shock. You push the button. How much does the EFF get for every time I get shocked? How much do you want them to get? But let's talk. Uh, you guys, talk we're about talking it. right now. I'm serious. I will arrange this. It will happen. Keep DEF CON weird. $5? So you have a... <laughs> <laughs> yes. so has to be done on the catwalk. <laughs> you have a hacker tracker. Does it know your elevation? Like, how can you get caught oh, if it doesn't track elevation? That is a good question. Elevation? Oh, yeah. That's Does right. it they track can't... his elevation? They can't see me up there. <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> right through that window. Up in the... I'm getting up there. He's not. When you get stuck, you can call hotline. <laughs> <laughs> he would get stuck, too. Um, this is the part of the panel where we like to take questions from the audience. And um, we have a microphone there in the middle aisle, and you are free to ask 
any question you want to ask, and we will try to do our best to answer it. Um, Seriously, and with serious. respect. <laughs> he noticed I looked at him. Yeah, I, saw, I, saw. I, I have tiny chickens for people who ask questions. All right, all right. That's nice. What does the chicken sound like? Chicken? <laughs> I don't, I don't no, know no, no, guys no, no. want that. Do it. Are they transcribing this live? I don't is know. Is there a transcription right now? Uh, do I will the chicken you. sound. What, is, what do they type when, when she does the chicken sound? Do the chicken sound. <laughs> what, what did they type? Nothing? Do it louder. They didn't, no, they no, didn't no, no, get no. it. They're glaring at us from off stage. I was a moderately sane person about two rubber chickens ago. They're little. Give me that chicken. You know, after that, um... Give me that chicken. Those dang things. <laughs> uh, if anybody doesn't have a question, um, I found these cute little camp talk conversation question cards. <laughs> um, gather around and make new friends with camp talk. And we are often referred to as the part of Hacker Summer Camp, which is, you know, besides Black Hat, DEF CON. Um, so if... People don't come up soon. I'm going to start asking them Please random questions up. from the from the deck. A question. So we've got approaches. one. We've got a taker. It... Yes. Can she chicken. have a chicken? Oh, that's. Can she have a chicken? That's that was hacker shit right there. That is that is it. That is it. Yeah, next year we need need to All be right. more specific. Good. Ask questions. Um. Grifter. I've been I've been gooning for 23 oh. years, so it's a long time. You what did you say? 21 years. Um, we've been around a while. How many years? Six years. I'm Six new years. compared that's to a, everyone that, else. That's here. all right. And how many years? Uh, let's see. I've been working for 10 this year. You're gonna retire, aren't you? Been around. No, 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 no. Yeah. But I've been around since the rib days. All right. Nice. Okay, yeah, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of DEF CON experience up here, as, also as attendees. Um, and I, I mentioned something, and I'll tell you what, what, I'm, what that means, what I said. At 10 years, if you've been a goon for 10 years, you can retire. And when you retire, you get a gold badge, like a gold goon badge, and you can come to DEF CON for free for life, just like the black badge, because you put in your 10 years. Um, so I will also add to that. So if you see somebody like Nikita who has 20 years on their patch, uh, on their lanyard, like they could have stopped doing this a long time ago and just started coming. So when you see any number above 10, they love this, right? They choose to do this. And that doesn't mean that somebody who's been doing it six years doesn't love it. I'm sure there will be a 10 year patch and a 15 year patch and a 25 year patch, right? Like, so. So the people who are, are wearing those patches, they, they love being here. So, you know, approach them, ask them questions. They've been I believe through we a have lot. a question. What you got? I can't, I can't hear, hear it. I can't hear it can you be, can you either louder or loud. the levels up on that? I said the follow up on that. People okay. have asked, how do I become a goon? How do you become a goon? Oh, okay. You're, you want, would you like a chicken? Uh, it's happening right now. You're becoming a goon. No. <laughs> this, um, is, this is how you're chosen. So that uh, is a very good question. And I will say right now we are in a transition period where we are trying to come up with a formal application process to become a goon. Um, traditionally in the past, you would become a goon because you went out and you said, I can help with that. and you And the person was like, fuck yeah I need help with that come on over here and you developed trust you developed a relationship with a goon you started working with them they're like hey you're you're helpful can you come back next year and be a goon and that's usually how it happened or it's like I know a guy a friend knows a guy they recommend each other but over the years we have like 600 goons now um, and we don't want it just to be someone you know to, in order to, to get to be a goon. So if you are an attendee and you don't know a goon, you know, go out and make friends with goons. We, we love it. But we also want a process that is a little bit more open to, to apply to. I, um, I will say that 10 years ago, I watched a panel about women at DEF CON and uh, CJ, the guy who is in charge of the SOC said, we, we just need more women to be sock goons, and we don't know how to get them. And I just literally stood up and said, I do that job. And he said, email me. Yeah. Ten years later, I'm still here. Yeah. Um, it was 
last night, actually, my, my best friend was saying to me that um, she heard from a couple of people that were having a conversation and they said, yeah, DEF CON's not the same as what it used to be. And that they feel like that we've become more diverse and they actually felt safer here because of our diversity. And also because of our wonderful programs like Hotline and you know we have uh, all of our goons now Oh, please answer it. Come on, do it this time. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? It's the lead I got, not the lead I wanted. Let's go. Hello? Put them near the speaker. <laughs> You're on stage. <laughs> You're on stage right now with me. I'm giving a talk. You had the audacity to call me. <laughs> Make them say What do you hi. want to say to the, to the audience? Let's see if I put you on speaker. Hold on. Say it loud. Okay. Go ahead. Hello, audience. Um... I want to help rectify the situation that is people modifying the lighting situation inside of um, the entire hall. Boring. Uh, you have to put me on blast for that. Um, I'll I I'll deal with that when I'm off stage. Me, me, Bye now. Bye. No, they're boring. Craig. Hang up right now. They're boring. <laughs> boring. No, you're boring. You're boring. Goodbye. You're cut off. Oh, Bye. That's another question. As I was talking to him, someone else was calling me. Um, yeah. What was I saying before? I don't. That? I have no yeah, idea. See, this I is have this no is what peer pressure will get to you. You have oh and, diversity at Def Con. Um, you said a best friend. All of us. Yeah. We used to all wear different colored shirts depending on what we did. So info booth would have a green shirt. Uh, sock would have a red shirt. Speaker ops would blue. We used to color code what we did, and the the rest of the goons blended in. And it felt like people didn't see the diversity of our real goon staff, which is absolutely amazing. I've never really experienced that anywhere else. I mean, any other con even, but um, that guy has a question, so I'm going to stop talking. Yeah, I'll, so, so really quick before she answers, they're really light. You just pick them up and carry them. No. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that. I knew that was, no. Come at me, front row. I'm ready. Would you like your chicken? I, I made sure that you can have multiple colors in case you don't want pink. All right. Um, so, go on, put, put my psychology hat back on. Um, there's some research that suggests that we tend to lose girls uh, in middle school. Like, they may be brilliant at math and sciences um, in elementary school, but in middle school, they're told girls don't do that. So um, my, my priority has always been going into the middle schools and um, teaching soldering or coding or making fun projects um, and trying to get the girls involved at that point. I know there's a lot of work being done in that space. So even if you talk to like your local high schools and middle schools, you might find that there's already a girls program for STEM where you could come in and talk to them about what it is you do and maybe lead them through a cool project. Um, like I said, soldering and coding. Uh, we made little necklaces that had little, uh, what are they, space invaders on them when I did one of my projects with the middle schoolers. So they're excited and ready to do the work, but we really have to keep them going yeah i think i know like for my daughter there's this like perception that you can't be like a girly girl but also be into tech um which just isn't true at all and she started to feel some of that pressure from her peers like where they were like oh like you do this you do that and she's like to her it was just completely normal grew up in a house around it all the time uh is a, a hardcore gamer like just in in her brain none of this is not normal to just do all the time but then from her own friends at that same age that you were talking about um and she is a very girly girl um but then was like oh well like her friends would be like oh where did you get this like makeup organizer and she's like i 3d printed it right like or where did you get whatever and and they're like, you 3D printed it. And she's like, oh yeah, you can just make it yourself. Oh, look at all these cool designs. We can make this, we can make this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh wait, maybe I judged this too quickly, right? Yeah, I, I remember when I was in high school and I was very good at math. And then I went into college. Throughout that whole period, I felt like I had to 
be a tomboy because that was what mm -hmm. if I wanted to be able to enjoy video games and technology I had to be a tomboy and finally I gave up on that and I said screw it like skirts and dresses so uh, nice. yeah. find those ways in which you can bring technology and games and those kinds of things into their space yeah and you have to you have to meet them on their level too you have to say things like Wow, you really got a, a lot of drip today. I'm really, I'm, I'm really impressed by your riz. And <laughs> no cap, no cap, for real, for real. Um, but skibbity toilet, skibbity, skibbity Ohio, skibbity riz. Yeah. Facts, no printer. Whoever has to type this, I feel so sorry. For, um, <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, that's amazing. Oh uh, yeah, it's just very mid, you know. <laughs> Ask us a camp question. Okay. Um, oh, there's a question. Oh, okay. There's a regular question. Sorry. I pick goals. Love it. Welcome. Uh, Woo! Woo! <laughs> Is there is there anyone here who um, would would? Yes, I want to find mm -hmm. We have we have several different villages. You could um, try from crypto privacy to the social engineering village. Um, we should definitely maybe connect you with someone after the talk. It sounds like this is a little bit more detailed than a question, and happy to to work with you afterwards. So, so noted. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right cool. Thank you. Thanks, Pickles. Thanks. What you got? Give me a camp question. Let's go. Uh, Grifter, what is the funniest or most unusual nickname you've ever heard for a camp counselor? Is that what would your you? nickname be? Oh my gosh, I can tell you, but I'd have to out myself. Do it. Oh, this is, I'm going to regret this so much, though. Fuck. You know what? This is, this is for my boy. Okay, so... Um, when I first started, when you started as a goon back in the day in the early single digit DEF CON days, everybody started as a sock goon. You had to start in security, to put your time in, and then you'd go on to something else. So I started out as a security goon, and then um, Russ was like, hey, I'll bring you into the vendors as soon as you put your time in in security. And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. I love hanging out in the vendor area. I was a vendor at the time. Oh, I'm going to say this in public. Um, 
And then I met, I met Romer, so our good friend Romer. So, um, so Russ introduces me to Romer and he says, hey, Romer, this is Grifter. And at the time I was younger and handsome. Uh, and so, <laughs> so Romer said, no. Um, and he was like, you're too good looking to have a cool handle. Your new handle is Nutsack. Aww. And Romer and Russ called me Nutsack and have continued to do so for 20 plus years. And, uh, and yeah, so what's the nickname for the camp counselor? Nutsack. 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 Um, <laughs> I have a funny You're story, but, you asked the question, but there was someone lining, lining up for a question. Sure. Okay. That happens so, a lot. It does. Yeah. It's happening! Oh, sorry. I thought we were going to ascend. Sorry. What the hell what is that? that? Is? I don't know what it is. Happy to, um, to direct you to our frequently asked questions on the um, CFP page, where we go through what we're looking for for talks. Um, it seems like Grifter wants to say yeah. a few words. So I have, so, um, so I have some advice on that as well. You want a chicken? Um, the thing about like, so, so I've served on multiple review boards for DEF CON, for Black Hat, um, other conferences as well. And what is a pattern that I see is that people will do incredible research. Like they do this incredible research. And then when they go to fill out the CFP submission, they will spend basically the bare minimum amount of time filling it out. Like you've spent a year doing the research put the time in to explain what it is you did and why it's important and why other people should hear about it. Um, often, you know, the abstract will be confusing or the bio of the individual will be longer than the abstract. The outline is not detailed. When we say detailed, we mean detailed. Show us what you're going to talk about at each stage of the talk. If you have a slide for something, I want to see a breakdown of what's going to be on that slide. What are you going to talk about? So really, that's it. If you put the time in to do all that research, take a fraction of that time to fill out the CFP and give us an idea of why it should come to the main stage. Okay, um, Grifter. Or actually, you know what? You've gotten lots of questions. You. Do you have a pet? What kind? What's its name? Its name is Grifter. <laughs> What's the funniest this trick is, your pet can do? This is a boring do? question because I don't have a pet <laughs> oh, other than Grifter. No. Where did you grow up? What was the street address of where you grew up? Your mother's maiden name? You didn't ask me my social? The last four of your social. <laughs> I think we have another. We have another question. Probably our last one. Yeah. We can't. An I can't answer that yeah, in a minute. Yeah, I definitely and 17 can't answer that here. I, it takes a. It, they're all long stories. Uh, I like T Rex yeah. fights. T Rex fights are fun. T Rex fights T -rex are good. Fight. I've seen naked a T Rex guy. fight before. Naked guy. Naked guy naked was guy. super like weird. Naked, naked guy though. I it's found out recently how he became naked guy. So we should talk I did, about. Yeah, that. I did too. Um, Trevor forget. Uh, yeah. Like, Trevor. Trevor forget. The cockroach that we had like a whole thing about. So the things we can't talk about for like to set a bar. At, at DEF CON 11 on the scavenger hunt list, it said streak through grifters talk, <laughs> right? And there were three and one of them hugged me on stage, right? So, and I'm willing to talk about that. So you can imagine what we're going to talk about after this. I, I really enjoyed I think, the, the- I think we'll need the couch. He'll need to lay down and <laughs> talk about his feelings. I enjoyed so, the, 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 the hacky, the, chairs that we had yeah. with the beans in it that they had to figure out how to get them out. They were like, one of the things you have to do for this contest is figure out how to get the chairs out without anybody stopping you. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that is it for us. And oh, there's a question. That was amazing. Oh, you know what? So good. Seven seconds. I was wrapping it up, sir. <laughs> so good. Thank you. You want a chicken? Thanks.